on from the uh, from the Ghostbusters reference here. We're gonna cross some streams. We're uh, or maybe cross some steams, as it were. We're throwing some chairs at Into the Breach, which is not a native Linux game, but it is on the compatibility list released by Valve for Proton. And so we've determined that if it's on the list, it's fair game for the chairquisition. This is Into the Breach, developed by Subset Games, is done on a custom engine. As from as mentioned before, it's playable via Proton. You can pick it up for about 15 of your local currency. What is it? The remnants of human civilization are threatened by galactic or Galactic gigantic <laughs> creatures breeding beneath the earth. You must control powerful mechs from the future to hold off this alien threat. Each attempt to save the world presents a new randomly generated challenge in this turn-based strategy game from the makers of FTL. These guys sent us some keys a while ago because they were, yep. there is a native Linux version supposedly in development, but uh, we didn't decide to wait that long. So, this is Cherokee Musician. <laughs> That becomes a score, and of course we give you the fun if we enjoyed it, and we rate that on an arbitrary scale of one to four chairs. So let's kick this off on Ubuntu. Then, did you go into the breach? Latest and greatest and most stable LTS, 1804. I'm sure there's some, um, wait, yeah, something newer out that I'm not going to touch, man. Ryzen 7, 980, and one shaking Jordan later. Seriously, man. <laughs> uh, here's the thing. I was curious to see something, actually play something that was on the approved, the white list uh, with the Proton Powers, and this seemed like a good candidate. However, if you are running more than one X screen, you genuinely spin the wheel of Booga Booga to figure out uh, what monitor this game is going to start on, but it's not necessarily this game. This is a problem with Proton. Uh, set everything to, you know, like X screen zero, not going to have the issue. So I got that sorted. And yeah, I know what I just said. There's a workaround. You can change the UX server's layout and that'll fix it. But that's one hell of a workaround for me. Anyway, it does launch. Once that's done, no problems with it. Window mode, that's good. Full screen. Hey, it's a piece of cake. That's how I played it. 3840 by 2160. And um, yeah, 60 frames, all the things, which it should. I mean, it's hipster pixel. Good looking. I dig it. Graphics. No issues, no artifacting. Uh, wouldn't expect to see that, and it wasn't there. Your controls, input for this joint, that's going to be keyboard and gerbil, and everything worked as planned. So uh, outside of the launching dickery, you know, I, I give it a solid three. All right. On Fedora, 2864-bit with the i7-6700K and the GTX 1080Ti. I was about to say 980, but I haven't been using that for a while. Um, yeah, it fucking launches. It's locked at 60 FPS. So, I mean, you can play this on the Switch, man. It's it's fine. Um, the graphics are very, very pixely. They're, it's well done pixel art. Um, kind of reminds me a little bit of Advanced Wars for the GBA, but a lot prettier. And uh, controls, you go click, click, boom. So that's going to be four chairs for me. Yeah, uh, over here, uh, I have the UHD monitor set as the primary. So on Solus 3.999999 with the uh, GTX 1080 and the Ryzen 5 1600, it uh, always launches smack in the middle of it, unless you move the window, at which point the next time you launch it, it actually remembers where the window was. So that's good. Uh, there's a lot of Unity games that could tend to learn a little bit from them. Uh, the performance, yeah, there's a frame limiter option and you really do want to keep it on. Yes, you can have 3,000 frames a second if you want, but come on. Uh, there's uh, nothing odd to report when it comes to graphics or the audio. Everything worked as well as you'd expect. Uh, it even though it's running through Proton, so good on them. And yeah, for the controls, you click the mouse and hit the buttons on the keyboard. It's a turn-based game so you get to take your time and i also liked how it gives you like a little bit of um a preview of what's going to happen if you move uh to a certain position or you fire a certain weapon that causes the uh the enemy knockback yes so, it yeah. makes it very clear that even though you're about to shoot your own unit giggity but it will have a desired effect yes <laughs> and uh yeah it's uh four ga uh, four chairs for me <laughs> all right well there you go 
Might have some problems if you have crazy X setups, but, you know, that is, that's part for the course of the Proton, at least for now. How about fun, then? Did you enjoy Into the Breach? This is turn-based strategy, man. You know I hated this game, and that's not necessarily entirely true, for the most part, kind of, on a Wednesday after 6 p.m. I honestly didn't hate it. It's really, really simple turn-based checkers. That's a good way to describe it for me. There is a lot of depth in this, if that's your jam, but I was at definitely able to vin my way through this game. Vin way? Yeah, that's the thing. It's the same thing as the wrong way, only faster. Um, being able to upgrade the mechs, that's nice. That's a good mechanic. It kept me interested. Uh, smashing monsters, you can't go wrong with that. That's kind of fun. I like the uh, whole idea of you know your mech punch. You move baddies, and as Pedro said, when you shoot things, that can also spread out the baddies, do some damage, and uh, just like noping things with tanks. Or the claymore, the mortar. That, that, that Keeps things interesting behind buildings and all that fun stuff. Uh, it does have bonus objectives, but you can safely ignore them. Hashtag Venway, uh, which I did. You can't go back and do those. So mm, keep that in mind. After like the just getting it up and running, you know, after figuring out, okay, if we're going to proton anything, we just got to set my first three monitors uh, as one X screen. I had a, really solid like 45 minutes nothing compared to what jordan's going to tell you of you know just time vampired with me and i think i enjoyed myself i think it did i mean i i normally would give something like this like two but i'll give this a solid three chairs because i could pick this up this is something you can pick up and just fuck around with and if you're like me you're not you don't want to get like super in depth with it it delivers at a good time Jordan? No, you're not going to give that a chairs? Uh, I already uh, did. Uh, yeah, it's usually at the end. Whatever. <laughs> Jor Jor what? What? Jordan's stupid? No, that's that's not a thing. No, uh, subset. Why you, why, why, why you do this 5B? I, I, so I knew, I knew going in that I was going to like this, because it has grid movement, giant robots, turn-based strategy, giant monsters. I'm, I'm, I'm sold. And the game really doesn't fail to deliver. The gameplay is really, really solid. Um... It reminds me a lot of 4th edition Dungeons & Dragons, which a lot of people really hate, but I thought it was a very well-designed game. Uh, there's a lot of emphasis on forced movement, and the fact that directly killing the monsters isn't always the best option. Usually, a stalling strategy, because you, you have a certain number of turns you need to complete the uh, your object objectives in, if you can stall that out, you'll just win. Uh, which is pretty neat. It gives you a lot of al alternative objectives, and it's a nice little deconstruction of like a lot of giant robot Fight, fighting games are just like, yeah, blow up the fucking city. Who cares? This is this one actually penalizes you for killing civilians, which makes sense given the context of the game. It's very it's very good uh, Ludo narrative harmony, in my opinion. Um, yeah, you you can upgrade your mechs. Uh, if you fuck up, you can always jump to a new timeline, which basically causes you to restart the game. But you can always take one of your uh, one of your dudes with you, and if they've gotten any cool abilities from leveling up you get to carry that on over to the next game which is pretty neat there's also a uh, replay ability where if you fuck up one turn you have uh, the ability to rewind and there are a couple characters that will give you the ability to do that more more than once which again very very cool uh the soundtrack though it's a little too ftl-ish i was hoping for something a little bit different maybe that's just been pretty style but it's like the Steve Harris style of, you know that one bass riff, and that's kind of your jam. Which is, alright, all I know is that I entered a bit of a fugue state while I was playing it, and about three and a half hours later, I looked at the time, I'm like, oh, well, I gotta go eat something. Um, I'm probably gonna pick this up on the Switch, too, just because I really want to play it on the toilet, although I should probably try it with the Steam Link app first. Regardless, I really enjoyed this game. I knew I was going to like it going into it, and I then had to stop me from playing it during the pre pre super shows, and so that means that it's probably worth about four cheers. Yeah, it uh, it plays similar to chess with how the different units have different uh, movement ranges, and all the weapons have different knockbacks. And like Jordan said, there is very much that emphasis on the knockback. So I really like that aspect, and if introducing mechs and giant bugs to chess is the way to get me to, to actually enjoy it, then kudos subset you, you did it uh, yeah it's uh, there are very few things that are as satisfying as causing like a cascade of death uh w with a well-placed shot i've killed uh, my record right now is three bugs in one shot with the uh, little mortar tank 
So that was uh, that made me feel good inside, which doesn't happen often. But yeah, uh, <laughs> if I had to pick one thing to hate, and I kind of do in order to justify the score I'm about to give it, it's the energy slash escort quest type mechanic, because. You really have to be careful with not letting the bugs kill the buildings or take a pot shot at a building just because it's going to kill a bug or two. It's really, really annoying. And it's so fundamental and it's such a core mechanic of how the rest of it was built that I think the game suffers a little bit for it. That's that again, that's totally on me. I don't really like having to worry that much about cities because the bugs they most of the time they just ignore you and go straight for the city it's like mother Mm -hmm. come on so yeah that uh that cheesed me out a little bit on the game but certainly not enough to dig it more than one chair so three chairs it is all right that's a it's nice to have a game that we all kind of universally enjoy we play a lot of crap for the chair acquisitions Mm -hmm. and it's all it's all it's always good to have like a good quality game um, and I, de- I highly recommend burning a heretic purchase on it if this is your gem. Um, or pick it up on one of the other married platforms available. You should totally play it on Linux so that you can mm-hmm. well, tell subset, hey, get on that native port. One of the things oh. you can sit back and hopefully they will deliver a native port. I gotta be honest, though, my gut organs telling me if this is something that rolled out day one on the whitelist with Proton, this might be it. They're, they're, they may also produce a browser version because they did that with FTL as well. Mm-hmm. So that would that yeah. would that would also be the other way of going about it.